long ago, before the new world was discovered. A forbidden land rested somewhere in the Middle East of Africa. And also really close to Europe as well. Okay, mostly Europe, but anyway. It is said that the Forbidden Land was once home to a proud village who always visited a noble building known as the Shrine of Worships. For many eons, people have lived there. They have worshipped a horned spirit named Dorman. Dorman had the uncanny ability to control the souls of the dead. He has the power to return the souls that were once killed off by a cursed fate. However, getting a request from this Dorman to bring back a soul of their choice was impossible. However, from many millenniums later, the people there learned to not worship the Horned Spirit himself, but fear it. And because of this, Dorman spirit was sealed away by Lord Iman with the power of the ancient sword. They say that this once village was quite advanced. It is also said that many temples roam the land itself. But what makes the Forbidden Land so unique is that it contains just about every kind of field imaginable. Where one can learn to survive every kind of element to problems that they may one day fear. Until such a time, for when Dorman will be released, he remains trapped inside the shrine itself. It was never to be released, and for many millennia, it never did. They say that this forbidden land holds several abilities as well. But for now, Dorman remains in the shadow of the Colossus. Yes! Hey everybody, it's the DRock 100 and welcome to my new Let's Play of Shadow of the Colossus. One of my personal favorite PlayStation 2 games at, of this time. And as you also notice that right here, I have hard mode unlocked. Um, I'll be getting into for how you would unlock um, hard mode a little bit later, but for the time being I think it's time that we get this story started with a new game Now I just want to say something that might Make you guys be a little bit confused This is actually a backup. Let's play If you guys haven't been following me Then I'll gladly tell you the story the game that I'm actually currently doing at the moment is Pokemon Platinum, which unfortunately is being put on hold. Uh, the studio that I'm using for it, which I got for a one whole month free trial, has, you guessed it, expired. I was able to upload episode 20 through this system that I'm doing at the very moment, which is Pinnacle, which is awesome. But, for the moment, I'm not going to really talk about that at the moment. That's all history. Now, 
I want to talk about this game. Um, that guy right there, a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of people thought that he was an unnamed person. His name is, believe it or not, Wander. Many people don't know this. Wander is a person who was under the servant of this Lord Iman, the one who sealed away dormant the power of the ancient sword. And his main transportation is probably one of the most epic names for a horse. Agro. And now, as for this place, welcome to the Shrine of Worship. And it looks like Wanders has a certain someone with him. I wonder for what he has in his arms. I guess I'll find out in just a second. This girl right here is Wander's loved one. Her name is Mana. What is this? Um, those things right there, I forget what their names are called. Crazy enough. Um, I'll post their name on screen. So, um, I could tell you guys what their names are, but I just don't remember what their names are. However, now that Wanders has done that, he has awakened Dormant himself. Dormi, 
And now, with that, we are now in full control. Um, now, just going over the controls. I have control stick moves, C stick, you can move. Well, right analog stick, you can move the fire, move the camera up and down, left and right. Um, pressing the square button uses your sword. Pressing the triangle is to jump. Pressing and holding down the B controls the light's positions. The way on when the light focuses on is our destination. Which is pretty straightforward. And if we press R1, we can crouch down, which is pretty cool. Um, if we were to move around, we would just do a slow movement. And if we also press the X button, we will call out aggro. Um, if you press down in the D-pad, you can put away your weapon, which is not really that useful. Um, pressing the left and right. D pad, you'll go through a cycle of which weapons you have to go from. Excuse me. And then 
pressing up on the D-pad, if not equipped, you will have your sword. Alright, so, along the way, I'm actually going to make up a story for each Colossus that we're going to be going up against. Don't judge, because these are created ones. Alright, here we go. Many millions of years ago, before the dinosaurs roamed the world, a race of creatures called minotaurs roamed the earth in searching for what they truly desire. Unfortunately, they were not successful. But what they were truly looking for is their source of life. However, millions of years later, a dreaded ice age destroyed the entire population, leaving all but one Minotaur. They say that this Minotaur was so powerful, so strong, that he is said to live for hundreds of thousands of, of millennium years. Alright, so we're gonna roll underneath that. Very useful. Um, that's also gonna be pretty useful for an upcoming boss. But for the time being, we're not gonna worry about that. Alright, anyway, back to the story. They say that Malos. Excuse me. They say that this Minotaur named Valos was said to be so powerful, so strong, that it was left unopposed. And. With that. Meet. The first member of the Colossi. Meet. Valus. Valus. Also known as the Minotaur Colossus. This thing is pretty powerful. And as you can see, we're beaming our light towards them. And it actually has two marks showing. One represents a weak point, and the other represents its true weak spot. So, what do you say? We get this fight underway. If I try to see if we can throw an arrow. Okay, no, never mind. How about we whistle for him? He has heard us, and I say, it's time to strike at him. We'll let him turn around all the way, and come right towards us. Standing up to 70 feet tall, which is the same thing as 21 meters, I say, let's do this. Now he has two attacks on him. As you can see, he has a powerful club right here, which is really, really big. Um, here's his first attack, which is just doing a stomp attack. Yeah. For a Minotaur being so ignorant, this thing is actually pretty easy. This is his weak point. Which I recommend that you stab him twice to truly bring him to his knees. And that is when we can truly climb up onto his ass. Anyway. This thing is actually really easy. I remember the first time when I battled this thing. Oh my god did I ever have problems with him. Um, he will try to struggle to throw you off of him, which is how this, how these battles are going to be handled, but all we just need to do is, is just charge up our attack and stab him. Yes, that's all you need to do. Um, he will occasionally try to buck you off, however, look at that, three strikes and he is out at the old ball game. Okay. Alright, there goes that baseball reference. Um, speaking of references, um, I'm gonna make it a goal 
They're trying not to do any kind of references from any of the Let's Players. I'm gonna make it a goal, okay? And these things right here, they are this essence of dormant. I think that's what they're called. They will always strike at you. There is no escape. Alright. And with that. Oh, we got a really weird scene that's coming up right here. More like weird sound, actually. Anyway. I would say with our first victory against the Colossi, I think we're pretty good to end things off right here. Alright, so. Next time, we're going to be tackling on our next Colossus. Alright, see you guys then.